Paramecium caudatum is a species of unicellular protist in the phylum Ciliophora. Paramecium has a worldwide distribution and is a free-living organism. It usually lives in the stagnant water of pools, lakes, ditches, ponds, freshwater and slow-flowing water that is rich in decaying organic matter. Paramecia caudatum are easily cultured in labs and serve as useful model organisms. If a drop of water containing paramecia is placed on a slide, the animals may be seen with the naked eye moving rapidly from place to place. Under the microscope they appear cigar-shaped. A closer view reveals a depression extending from the end directed forward in swimming, obliquely backward and toward the right, ending just posterior to the middle of the animal. This is the oral groove. The cytosome is situated near the end of the oral groove. It opens into a funnel-shaped depression called the cytopharynx or gullet, which passes obliquely downward and posteriorly into the endosarc. The oral groove gives the animal an unsymmetrical appearance. Since paramecium swims with the slender but blunt end foremost, we are able to distinguish this as the anterior end. The opposite end, which is thicker but more pointed, represents the posterior end, while the side containing the oral groove may be designated as oral or ventral, the opposite side abral or dorsal. The modal organs are fine thread-like cilia regularly arranged over the surface. Two layers of cytoplasm are visible, as in amoeba, an outer comparatively thin clear area, the ectoplasm and a central granular mass, the endoplasm. Besides these a distinct pellicle or periplast is present outside of the ectosarc. Lying in the ectoplasm are a great number of minute sacs, the trichocysts, which discharge long threads to the exterior when properly stimulated. One large contractile vacuole is situated near either end of the body close to the dorsal surface, while a variable number of food vacuoles may usually be seen. The nuclei are two in number, a large macronucleus and a smaller micronucleus. These are suspended in the ectoplasm near the mouth opening. The anal spot can be observed only when solid particles are discharged. It is situated just behind the posterior end of the oral groove. The body of the paramecium cell is enclosed by a stiff but elastic membrane, called pellicle. Pellicle is made up of a thin, gelatinous substance produced by the cell. The layer of the pellicle gives the paramecium a definite shape and good protection of its cell content. The pellicle is also elastic in nature which allows the paramecium to slightly change its shape. Under the higher powers of the microscope the pellicle is then seen to be made up of a great number of hexagonal areas produced by striations on the surface. These striations are really very fine grooves which cross one another obliquely. The distribution of the modal organs, the cilia, corresponds to the arrangement of the striations on the cuticle, since one cilium projects from the center of each hexagonal area. These thread-like structures occur on all parts of the body, those at the posterior end being slightly longer than elsewhere. A fusion of cilia has occurred within the mouth cavity, producing the undulating membrane. This is attached to the dorsal wall of the mouth, and guides the food particles that are swept within its reach. A cilium may be compared to a very fine pseudopodium which has become a permanent structure. It is an outgrowth of the cell protoplasm, coming from a basal body called a microsome which appears to arise from the nucleus. Just beneath the cilia, embedded in the cortical layer of the ectoplasm, is a uniform layer of spindle-shaped structures lying with their long axes perpendicular to the surface. These are trichocysts. They appear to be cavities in the ectoplasm filled with a semi-liquid homogeneous substance which is very refractive. They arise in the neighborhood of the nucleus. A small amount of osmic or acetic acid, when added to a drop of water containing paramecia, causes in some cases the discharge of the trichocysts to the exterior through very small canals. This explosion is due to the pressure derived from the contraction of the cortical layer of the ectoplasm. After the explosion, the trichocysts appear as long threads which have been extended to about eight times their former length. Trichocysts are supposed to function as weapons of offense and defense. It is said that their contents are discharged with considerable force and that they contain a poison strong enough to paralyze any single-celled animal. Evidence that the trichocysts are weapons of defense is furnished when paramecium encounters another ciliate didinium. 
If the seizing organ of this protozoan becomes fastened in the paramecium, a great number of trichocysts near the place of the injury are discharged. These produce a substance which becomes jelly-like on entering the water. This tends to force the two animals apart, and, if the paramecium is a large one, it frequently succeeds in making its escape. Enclosed inside the pellicle layer of a paramecium is a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. The cytoplasm of paramecia can be divided into two layers, ectoplasm and endoplasm. The ectoplasm does not contain any of the large granules characteristic of the endoplasm, since its density prevents their entrance. The endoplasm of paramecium occupies the central part of the body. It is supposed to be alveolar in structure. Most of the larger granules contained within it are shown by microchemical reactions to be reserve food particles. They flow from place to place, indicating that the protoplasm is of a fluid nature. In this respect the two kinds of cytoplasm resemble the ectoplasm and endoplasm of amoeba. The cytosol is a complex mixture of small molecules like ions, amino acids, nucleotides, lipids, sugars, and large macromolecules such as proteins and RNAs. A paramecium has all the common organelles of eukaryotic cells, including mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes and peroxisomes. Cytoplasmic streaming, also called protoplasmic streaming or cyclosis, plays an important role in cell processes since it promotes the movement of the fluid substance, cytoplasm. Paramecium is a pretty large cell and relies on cytoplasmic streaming to exchange nutrients and metabolites between the cytoplasm and organelles. Cytoplasmic streaming circulates the cytoplasm and organelles around the paramecium cell. For example, the food vacuoles move around via cytoplasmic streaming to distribute the nutrients in the cell. Cytoplasmic streaming is generated by the movement of motor proteins, myosin, on the cytoskeleton, actin, filaments. As the myosin molecules, walk, along the actin filaments dragging the organelles with them, the circulation of cytoplasmic fluid starts. Two contractile vacuoles are present, occupying definite positions, one near either end of the body. They lie between the ectoplasm and the endoplasm, close to the dorsal surface, and communicate with a large portion of the body by means of a system of radiating canals, 6 to 10 in number. The way in which water enters the contractile vacuole had been a mystery for many years, but several discoveries since the 1990s have improved understanding of this issue. The discovery of proton pumps in the contractile vacuole membrane and the direct measurement of ion concentrations inside the contractile vacuole using microelectrodes led to the following model. The pumping of protons either into or out of the contractile vacuole causes different ions to enter the contractile vacuole. For example, some proton pumps work as cation exchangers, whereby a proton is pumped out of the contractile vacuole and a cation is pumped at the same time into the contractile vacuole. In other cases, protons pumped into the contractile vacuole drag anions with them, carbonate, for example, to balance the pH. This ion flux into the contractile vacuole causes an increase in contractile vacuole osmolarity and as a result water enters the contractile vacuole by osmosis. The vacuoles grow in size by the addition of liquid which is excreted by the protoplasm into the canals and is then poured into them. When the full size is reached, the walls contract and the contents are discharged to the exterior probably through a pore. The two vacuoles do not contract at the same time but alternately, the interval between successive contractions being 10 to 20 seconds. The duration of the systole is long compared with that of the diastole due probably to the presence of the excretory tubule. What has been said of the function of the contractile vacuole in amoeba applies as well to that of paramecium, i.e. it acts as an organ of excretion and respiration, and is probably hydrostatic. Most of the nitrogen secreted by paramecium is in the form of urea and this substance has been detected in the contractile vacuole. However, the greater part of the excretory matter, including urea, apparently passes by dialysis directly to the exterior through the pellicle. That the primary function of the contractile vacuole is to regulate the water content of the protoplasm is indicated by the correlation between the frequency of pulsation and the rate watt.er is taken in. For example, 
Most long periods between pulsations, up to 6 minutes when actively swimming, occur when little water is ingested, and most short periods occur when the animals are at rest. Unlike the regular eukaryotic cells, paramecium has two types of nuclei, micronucleus and macronucleus, which differ in their shape, content, and function. The micronucleus is diploid, it contains two copies of each paramecium chromosome. The micronucleus contains genome, all of the DNA that is present in the organism. This DNA is passed from one generation to another generation during reproduction. Morphologically, the macronucleus is kidney-liked or ellipsoidal in shape. The macronucleus contains a subset of DNA from the micronucleus. These DNA fragments are copied from micronucleus to macronucleus because they carry genes that are frequently needed by the paramecium cell. Genes in the macronucleus are actively transcripted to mRNA and then translated to proteins. The macronucleus is polyploid or contains multiple copies of each chromosome, sometimes up to 800 copies. All paramecium species have one macronucleus. However, the number of micronuclei can vary by species. The micronucleus is found close to the macronucleus. It is a small and compact structure, spherical in shape. The function of the micronucleus is to maintain genetic stability and make sure that the desirable genes are passed to the next generation. Macronucleus plays a role in non-reproductive cell functions including the expression of genes needed for the everyday function of the cell. The macronucleus is also called the vegetative nucleus. Two distinct nuclei, is a mechanism by which paramecia and other ciliates can stave off genetic intruders, meaning pieces of DNA that spy themselves into the genome, for example, virus DNA. By having two nuclei, if a piece of DNA is in the micronucleus but not in the macronucleus, it will be removed during the next round of cell division. This mechanism functions as a primitive DNA immune system, that is, surveying the genome and trying to keep out invading elements. The only movements of paramecium that in any way resemble those of amoeba are seen when the animal passes through a space smaller than its shorter diameter. It will then exhibit an elasticity which allows it to squirm through. In a free field paramecium swims by means of its cilia. Cilia are projections distributed throughout the cell. One paramecium caudatum cell can have 5,000, 6,000 cilia. Cilia are very tiny structures approximately 0.25 micrometers in diameter and up to 20 micrometers in length. There are two types of cilia present on the cells of paramecia, oral cilia and body cilia. Oral cilia are present on the surface of the oral groove. They help collect food materials. Body cilia are on the body surface and facilitate its locomotion. They act like microscopic oars to move the organism in one direction. Body cilia are arranged in longitudinal rows, along the head-to-tail axis, with a fairly uniform length throughout the cell. There are also a few longer cilia present at the posterior end of the cell, quite obvious in paramecium caudatum. These form caudal tuft of cilia, hence the name caudatum. A cilium is made up of microtubule bundles. Each cilium contains nine pairs of microtubules forming the outside of a ring and two central microtubules. This structure is known as an axoneme. Microtubules are held together by cross-linking proteins. There are motor proteins, called dynean, sitting across each paired microtubule fiber. The motor proteins, dynean, use ATP as energy to crawl along the microtubules. When dynean proteins move upward on one side but downward on the other side, the cilium bends. The repeat of bending relaxing cycles makes cilia act like oars, beating back and forth to create movement. Motion of cilia exhibits beautiful metachronal wave-like coordination where a constant phase difference is maintained between adjacent cilia. By analyzing the high-speed video frame by frame, scientists found that the paramecium swims in a way similar to how we swim in the front crawl stroke. During the effective stroke, the cilium extends straight up, in order to engage more water, and beats against water, thus bringing the body forward and sending the water backward. During recovery stroke, the cilium comes back to the original position by its backward movement. The cilium tends to bend and stay closer to the cell surface to minimize the resistance. In order to swim efficiently, all the cilia do not move at a time. Cilia group into two types of coordinated rhythms. Synchronous rhythm, 
Cilia of transverse row move at the same time. Metachronous rhythm. Cilia of longitudinal row beat one after another. This creates metachronal waves passing from the anterior to the posterior end. Cilia move in metachronous rhythm to create a propulsive force. In addition to its forward or backward movement paramecium rotates on its long axis. This rotation is over to the left, both when the animal is swimming forward and when it is swimming backward. The revolution on the long axis is not due to the oblique position of the oral groove, as might be supposed, for if the animal is cut in two, the posterior half, which has no oral groove, continues to revolve. The cilia in the oral groove beat more effectively than those elsewhere. The result is to turn the anterior end continually away from the oral side, just as happens in a boat that is rowed on one side more strongly than on the other. As a result the animal would swim in circles, turning continually toward the abral side, but for the fact that it rotates on its long axis. Through the rotation the forward movement and the swerving to one side are combined to produce a spiral course. The swerving when the oral side is to the left, is to the right. When the oral side is above, the body swerves downward. When the oral side is to the right, the body swerves to the left, etc. Hence the swerving in any given direction is compensated by an equal swerving in the opposite direction. The resultant is a spiral path having a straight axis. Rotation is thus effective in enabling an unsymmetrical animal to swim in a straight course through a medium which allows deviations to right or left, and up or down. The food of paramecium consists principally of bacteria and minute protozoa. The animal does not wait for the food to come within its reach, but by continually swimming from place to place is able to enter regions where favorable food conditions prevail. The cilia also aid in bringing food particles since a sort of vortex is formed by their arrangement about the oral groove which directs a steady stream of water toward the mouth. Food particles that are swept into the mouth are carried down into the cytopharynx by the undulating membrane. They are then moved onward by the cilia lining the cytopharynx and are finally gathered together at the end of the passageway into a vacuole which gradually forms in the endoplasm. When this vacuole has reached a certain size, it is pinched off from the extremity of the cytopharynx by a contraction of the surrounding protoplasm, and the formation of another vacuole is begun. A food vacuole is a droplet of water with food particles suspended within it. As soon as one is separated from the cytopharynx, it is swept away by the rotary streaming movement of the endoplasm known as cyclosis. This carries the food vacuole around a definite course which begins just above and behind the cytopharynx, passes backward to the posterior end, then forward near the dorsal surface to the anterior end, and finally downward and along the ventral surface toward the mouth. During this journey digestion takes place. Food vacuoles function like our stomach and contain digesting enzymes to break down the food materials into nutrient molecules. The feeding process by engulfing through food vacuoles, called phagocytosis, is common in single-celled microorganisms such as amoeba. However, only the members of the ciliates and euglena families develop the special cytosome cytopharynx system. After nutrients are absorbed into the cytoplasm by the cell, the indigestible debris is discharged from the anal pore. Unlike amoeba a special anal spot or cytopage is present in paramecium through which indigestible solids are discharged to the outside. This opens on the ventral surface just behind the mouth. It can be seen only when material is cast out. Paramecium reproduces only by simple binary division. This process is interrupted occasionally by a temporary union, conjugation, of two individuals and a subsequent mutual fertilization. In binary fission the animal divides transversely. The first indication of a forthcoming division is seen in the micronucleus, which undergoes a sort of mitosis, its substance being equally divided between the two daughter nuclei. These separate and finally come to lie one near either end of the body. The macronucleus elongates and then divides transversely. The cytopharynx produces a bud which develops into another cytopharynx. These two structures move apart the old cytopharynx advancing to the ventral middle line of the forepart of the body, and the new one to a similar position in the posterior half. The undulating membrane remains with the old cytopharynx while a new one arises in connection with the new cytopharynx. A new contractile vacuole arises near the anterior end of the body, another just back of the middle line. 
While these events are taking place a constriction appears near the middle of the longitudinal diameter of the body, this cleavage furrow becomes deeper and deeper until only a slender thread of protoplasm holds the two halves of the body together. This connection is finally severed and the two daughter paramecia are freed from each other. Each contains both macro and micronuclei, two contractile vacuoles, and a cytosome with cytopharynx. The entire process occupies about two hours. The time, however, varies considerably, depending upon the temperature of the water, the quality and quantity of food, and probably other factors. The daughter paramecia increase rapidly in size, and at the end of 24 hours divide again if the temperature remains at from 15 degrees minus 17 degrees Celsius. If the temperature is raised to 17 degrees minus 20 degrees Celsius, two divisions may take place in one day. The process of sexual reproduction, conjugation, is much more complicated than asexual reproduction, binary fission. During conjugation two cells of compatible mating types meet and align side by side. They become partially fused and form a protoplasmic bridge in between. At this stage, their micronuclei are diploid. Each cell undergoes meiosis to produce four haploid micronuclei. Out of these four micronuclei, three degenerate and disappear. The remaining one micronucleus divides by mitosis to form two unequal pronuclei or gamete nuclei. The smaller gamete nucleus is active in migratory in nature and is called migratory gamete nucleus. The larger gamete nucleus is passive and stationary in nature and is called stationary gamete nucleus. The migratory gamete nucleus of one cell passes through the protoplasmic bridge into another cell. Within each cell, the new migratory gamete nucleus fuses with its stationary gamete nucleus. This fusion, also called syngamy, results in the formation of a single diploid zygote nucleus. This zygote nucleus is also known as syncarion. The zygote nucleus in each cell divides three times by mitosis to form eight nuclei. Four of these eight nuclei grow in size to become macronuclei. The remaining four small nuclei are called new micronuclei. Out of the four micronuclei, three degenerate and disappear. And the remaining one micronucleus divides twice into four daughter paramecia, each has one micronucleus and one macronucleus. In this way, eight paramecia are produced as a result of the conjugation of two mating paramecia. During conjugation, genetic materials are exchanged between the matching mating types. It brings genetic variability in the offspring individuals due to genetic recombination. Genetic variability can speed up evolution and increase the chance to adapt to environmental change. So sexual reproduction increase the chance of survival of the entire population. Paramecia have some sense of, smelling, and can respond to certain chemical cues, like glutamate, in their environment. Paramecia can also sense the intensity of light and prefer to stay in an environment of dim light, because of their food, bacteria, and yeasts, like this environment, too. Paramecia also sense pH value and temperature, too. The slightly acidic environment is usually associated with the overgrowth of bacteria. Paramecium cilia can sense its surrounding by touching. This can guide the paramecium to turn around when it bumps into something or fire its trichocytes when it encounters predators. However, the sensor may not be very sensitive, so we frequently see an amoeba slowly approaching and engrafting a paramecium unconsciously. Numerous bacterial endosymbionts have been identified in species of paramecium. Some species of paramecium form mutualistic relationships with other organisms. Paramecium bursaria and paramecium chloroligerum harbor endosymbiotic green algae, from which they derive nutrients and a degree of protection from predators such as Didinium nasutum. Because some species of paramecia are readily cultivated and easily induced to conjugate and divide, it has been widely used in classrooms and laboratories to study biological processes. Its usefulness as a model organism has caused one ciliate researcher to characterize it as the white rat of the phylum ciliophora.